Right at the front, decline in the middle, yeah. having a few words, I think, with, that might be, is that, is that Finn Fisher Black? No, that might be Vega Slacker Lang in oh. there as well for UE team member. Yeah, There's two or three UE riders. Uh, uh, not not Again, Sudo quick step number 95 is Wada Van Heerlewit, the man we spoke about a little bit earlier. We're looking forward to seeing what he could do tomorrow. So what's happened here? Ah, oh, dear. Well, the, the problem happened further forward, but that switch across where that rider just, he hit a wheel with your feet out of the pedals, and it just cascaded down the bunch and took riders out behind him. There was just a big touch of wheels. Riders sort of switching to avoid running into someone. It just took out those behind them. So uh, it's a nasty one at high speed too. Not good. Not good to see, uh, particularly on such a wide road as well. But again, as, as Robbie's mentioned it's those sandy edges that can cause the problem so this is the final catch of andreas miltaidis great ride by the terengano cycling team man brilliant ride by him today and now all back together these are the final five kilometers of the alula tour and that is we have to call it a slightly reduced bunch we know we've lost um uh, who have we lost in there? Sorry, we, we've, well, we've, we've lost David Decline for a start. He was second yesterday, the Dutchman, so he will miss out. Section, real squeeze in through that traffic control point. And it checks Mulebran Mulebran. just being, yeah, this is the African continental champion just being checked over, having his shoulders, collarbone maybe they're being looked at. Dries van Gestel is looking around on the left-hand side of our shot to see where Jason Tesson is. Have they still got him in good position? Who's still there? Bora Hansgrohe, maybe, maybe Robbie thinking about Matteo Sobrero for a finish like this, bearing in mind how well he's been sprinting in this race so far. Ten bonus seconds available for the winner, too. That would move him right up, in fact, into the lead of the race. Let's see of the non-sprinter types who can get involved in this finale. We said it's not a mountainous finale, but it's definitely testing enough to be made making the riders very, very nervous with 4.5k to go. Well, in this situation now, you've got no Molano, no Arvid de Klen. Dylan Hunebeg was a non-starter today. Tim Merlier is so good at just hiding himself away out of the out of the window. Have not spotted him just yet. Coming on the left of screen now, Jaco Alula. That's Alessandro De Marchi. And they're just trying to guide also Simon Yates. But where is Luca Mezgetz? He tends to do his own thing quite a lot, Mezgetz. He's probably just a little bit further back trying yeah. to choose himself a goodwill. I think... Uh, Tim Merlier, I'm looking for that red jersey that he's wearing today. Simon Yates is sitting third wheel. He's the last of the Jaco Alula riders, so don't tell me they're thinking of something with Yates today. You never know, though, in a little rise like this when they get near to Morea and the mirrored building oh. itself. Definitely an opportunity for Soren Vanschgold right there, middle of the shot. Ah, there's Merlier right in the middle. Yeah, he's Merlier very close right to Vanschgold. in the middle there. Yeah. Yep. Just in front of him. The other rider we should talk about, maybe, Robbie, as well, is Dusan, R Dusan Rejevic, as well, the Bahrain victorious rider who's been sprinting so well, the Serbian national champion. He's there, top left of your screen, as is Fred Wright of Bahrain victorious. In fact, he's got Dusan Rejevic just behind him. So Fred Wright, once again, the pilot for the Serbian national champion, Dusan Rejevic. Good opportunity for him with reduced top-end sprinters in this field, too. Well, that's just pointing out Mezgetz there. He's been following Tim Merlier, just really sticking to his heel. Merlier just trying to slide up through the middle now. He's a long way back with three and a half kilometres to go. There's Gleb Siritsa from Astana in the middle coming towards the front. Bora Hansgrohe doing a good job. And I think, yes, they will try and launch Sobrero. See if he can pinch some bonus seconds. Maybe the leader's jersey. Now it's John Degenkolb bringing DSM to the front and Kaspar van Uden in that green jersey into fourth wheel now. Getting well organised, DSM, and using the bends in the road. Cut it off onto the left-hand side, then cut it off onto the right-hand side, stop others being able to come up and take over. So they're just using the road and the, the bends to their advantage to just really control the front of this peloton. DSM Fermanek post NL, the Dutch team in prime position here. Three riders in front of the race leader. Are we going to see the race leader take a stage win in Casper Van Uden? He is on a high this week. He got his first professional victory on Tuesday up into the Almanchia train station, that flat, fast sprint there. But he's well suited to a finish like this. We know he can climb well up a gradual rise. 
Still early though, Jez. They are early on the front DSM with two and a half kilometres to go. That is lead out train in full effect. Shoulders being used there by Van Uden, just protecting his position. Brian Cocard, he's put himself just into the slipstream of Van Uden as well. Other yep. side of the road is Bahrain victorious. Pascalon just screaming at his lead out man, poised him behind him. One of the riders from Jaco Alula, but still further back, Merlian out there looking down towards the left side train, about 10 back is Merlian, and he's got Bert van Lerberger right next to him, ready to launch. Right, so DSM Fermanek post NL need to keep this going. They've got three riders in front of the race leader, Kasper van Uden, but as you say, notably, Brion Cocard in the red and white there of Coppedis on the wheel of van Uden. Wonderful opportunity for the Frenchman, the uphill sprint specialist, the lightest weight of the best sprinters in this field, Brion Cocard. And they're looking to bring Arvid oh, de Klaai back in. This is an extremely late rush to bring yesterday's second place finisher back to the race. Wow. I think he's just going to run out of time, Jez. I mean, one and just, a half K to go, and yes. now the lead out really starting to go full, and he's not quite on the back yet, so unfortunately. But Van Uden now in third wheel. Kokard, he has been piloted perfectly into position. Tim Merlier was back about 15th wheel. He's now back in about 10th in the red jersey on the wheel of his teammate. Riders, right a little split starting to open up. The Bora Hunsko rider losing a couple of lengths there. So Levan Lerberg is going to have to drag Merlier up a long way to get him in contention. It's still 1.2 to go. Tim Malia wearing that red jersey, don't forget. There he is on the back wheel of Bert van Leerberger, as Robbie says. And uh, this is Niels Ikhoff, the Dutchman for DSM Fermanek, doing a long, hard turn. Look at the way it's thinned things down. We're into the rise now as well. Final kilometre, 900 metres to go to the line. You've got a right-hander, and then it just keeps ramping to the line. Forced little flat, a little tabletop over the top after they've gone past the mirrored building itself. DSM Fermanek still in prime position right now, but have they done too much too soon? They're down to two right Riders. The race leader in the green jersey, Kasper Van Uden, winner of stage one, ready to go. His final lead out man is just bringing him into position, Robbie. Merlier and Cocard, they're fighting for the wheel of Van Uden. Merlier, he's coming up to try and take it. Behind Mezgetz, he's sitting just perfectly behind those two. Merlier, Cocard putting each other in the wind. Van Uden getting a perfect run. Merlier goes. Merlier going early, Brian Cockard on the left, middle is Kasper Van Uden, but he's done it again, Tim Merlier. He's even looking back already. Yesterday he looked back and had time. He's going to have the same today, I think. Or is Cockard going to come at him? It's still rising at this point. merlier has gone early. What has Brian Cockard got left? Can he come up the wheel? We need to look at the front end shot. Cockard up alongside Merlier and a dip. Oh, my goodness. He pointed at his chest, the Frenchman. I think Le Coq has just stolen it, Robbie. Well, it wow. looked just before the line that he was not going to get over the top, but that was a million... He, I mean, look at them fighting each other and then the, the early acceleration Cocard reacts straight away so does Mezgetz, he just gets you know, blown away, the, the gap opens right up, on the right hand side there is uh, that's it Van Uden on the from inside oh, the young, the young rider jersey, sorry about Merle, but look at Cockard now, he picks up the slipstream and he starts to come, he said, oh, I have got you now, but Merlier, he's fighting, fighting with everything, Ooh, hanging yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, that is a, it's still a photo finish, and wow. we, what we do know, Jez, is you've always got to take into consideration where go. the equipment is, and it's in the favour mm. of Tim Merlier, who hangs on and wins it by yep. 55, 60 millimetres. <laughs> yeah, 50 because mil it's the rim, rim plus a tiro ready for tomorrow. Rick Plumbers in fifth now, 22 seconds down. Mezgetz, uh, Finn Fischer Black, Mahoney Kudus, again sitting very pretty, uh, the Eritrean, in eighth and primed for a good climb tomorrow as well, Mahoney Kudus. So let's mark him there. Uh, we